The movie opens up by a fun-loving, super excited, full of joy, and energetic girl named Lee Nami. She works as a marketer at a startup company. She is an ordinary office worker who works hard every day. She also works part-time at her father's cafe, Cafe Mitsi. Her best friend is Jong Eun-ju. She is happy with her life and keeps having fun. One day, Lee Nami loses her smartphone on the bus, and it is picked up by someone. In the next scene, we see the boy having Lee Nami's phone. Just then, Nami's phone receives a call from her friend Eunju. He picks up and uses a fake voice app to speak so his voice won't be recognized. So that it seems that there is a girl talking. She found this phone on the bus and asks whether she should give it to the police. Eunju tells her to wait, as she will ask Nami and tell. She goes to Nami's house and makes her talk to that boy. It seems to them that he is a girl. She tells him to leave the phone at Cafe Mitsi. With the notifications coming on Nami's phone, he starts finding out everything about her. Nowadays, everyone puts a lot of information online. He goes through Nami's friend list and finds out about her interests. He takes all the necessary information, which he is going to use in his own way. He tries to unlock the phone, but it is password protected. In a fit of rage, he breaks the phone's screen. The story shifts to the crime scene. Due to rain on the mountain, the dead body buried there comes out. Many policemen had come there for investigation. Wu Ji-man and Kim Young-ho are talking about who could have done this. And both of them suspect only one person, Ji-man's son. Because Ji-man and his son had planted a tree at the place where the body was found. Plant food products used by his son were found around the body. As if he himself is marking everything. Ji-man has a feeling that his son left home seven years ago but hasn't changed his address yet. He was not like that then, nor did he have the courage to take someone's life. He thinks that his son may be a fraud or stupid, but he cannot kill anyone. yung -ho thinks that he might be working with some bad people. And all this was done by his companions. Ji-man also gets the idea that maybe this can happen. yung -ho asks if he will have contact with his mother. He says that he left his mother sick and never came back. So it is impossible for him to stay in contact, but still, he will check once for the sake of investigation. The story may seem different to you in two parts, but they are interrelated. Actually, the boy who picked up the phone on the bus is Jun Yang, G-Man's son. He got separated from his parents seven years ago because of differences with his father. Nami is at her father's cafe, and Sung Woo makes her a plumade. They don't sell it, this special drink is only for Nami. Jun Yang calls and tells Nami in a female voice that her phone's screen is broken. As we know, it was he who broke it. He has sent it to the repair shop to get it fixed and paid the bill as well. So Nami can receive the phone over there. Nami goes to collect her phone at the address given by him. But things are not so straightforward here. Actually, this shop belongs to Jun Yang. He gets access to her password, and under the pretense of fixing her broken phone screen, he installs spyware on her phone and clones it. Now he has the ultimate excess of each and every movement of Nami's life. She takes her phone and leaves. Nami unexpectedly walks around and does everything with her phone, every action, conversation, and text is monitored by Jun Yang. In the evening, he comes to the cafe to drink plumade, which Nami's father makes for her. So far, Nami is unaware of him and has never seen him. He is a stranger to her. Although he knows everything about her, he insists on plumade, saying that he used to come here regularly earlier and used to order plumade. Nami makes it and gives it to him. Then they talk a little normally, and sung -woo also looks at them. He asks Nami about the drink and why she gave it, they don't even sell it. She says that he is a regular customer, and then sung -woo keeps trying to remember his face. Nami comes home, where she lives alone. Jun Young digs into her phone all night. G-Man checks his wife's phone from which he comes to know that she is still in contact with his son. She recently sent some goods or even food. He finds an address that may belong to Jun Yang. Because he kept changing his places. In the morning, we see Nami in her day-to-day -day life. Throughout the night, Jun Yang made notes by extracting all the details about her. He keeps an eye on her all day. He knows quite a bit about Nami, her likes, and dislikes. She lives alone in the house and is not even a landlord. Door lock pin, when she leaves home, where she goes, where she studied, what and how she is doing on the job, who is her friend, and who is her boss. With whom she is connected the most, and with whom she talks the least, Nami also has a secret Instagram account, from which she keeps criticizing her boss a little. She also makes complete notes of all kinds of information. Now he has put Nami's picture on his laptop as well. 
We noticed that earlier he had posted a picture of another victim. The one who is already dead that means the person is not normal, he is a psycho killer. Nami's boss gives her a salary hike only for her hard work and asks not to tell anyone. On the other hand, Jun Young arrives at Nami's house to investigate everything. G-Man has also got the address and wants to catch Jun Young. Yun Ho gives him some information that he used to change the address. Then he stopped using the phone, and he filed a lawsuit for fraud in 2019. He reaches Jun Young's house to investigate, where he gets the same notes, and these are of eight girls. At number nine is Nami, who is about to become a victim. He had made similar notes for the former victim girl as well. Like who is in her family, with whom she stays close, and what she does, just like Nami. G-Man learns that the body found on the mountain belonged to this girl. Some of her pictures are also found, from her last time because she was Jun Yang's recent victim. Jun Yang turns up at the house before he can find out anything else. He learns that G-Man is inside the house. He distracts him, brings him out, and sends him a little distance away. Till then, he destroys all the evidence. He runs away from there with his bag. This bag is very important to him because it contains his victim's phone, notes, and other things, which is like an achievement for him, like a record. Jun Young goes to Sun Wu's cafe with his new professional ID as a digital security agent. He knows that Nami has some CDs to sell, so he gets them by pretending to buy them and also sells her some match tickets. He orders Pluma, which Sun Wu serves him. Sun Wu has a doubt about him. While dropping Nami home, he tells her to stay away from that boy because he is getting negative vibes from him. He has never been to the cafe before, but he remembers his regular customers. But Nami does not pay much attention to his words. Jun Yang is listening to everything they say. Ji Man goes to meet the last victim's mother. From what she said, it is known that Jun Yang's pattern of ensnaring girls is exactly the same. Breaking the phone screen, finding out the password, and then cloning the phone. Then keep an eye on them and go close to them. He uses their house after killing his victim. Survives on their money. Basically, he steals their identities. Jun Yang sends a message to Sun Wu and installs spyware on his phone as well. Then, by attacking him, he makes him a captive in his own house. Now he lives in his house. To spoil Nami's life, Jun Yang leaks confidential information and frames her. Nami is fired from her job. Meanwhile, it rains heavily on the mountain, due to which seven bodies buried there start appearing. Fear spreads everywhere, and G-Man gets upset. Now he has to catch his criminal son as soon as possible. Nami's life got disturbed, and she went with Inju to report cybercrime, where he tells her to bring proof that her phone was hacked. She gets more worried about where she got the proof. Her dad texts her that he is taking off today. Jun Young had sent this message. Unju and Nami contact their digital security friend, but she has gone on vacation. Nami remembers that the guy she met at the cafe is also in the safety security firm, so she contacts him. Jun Yang is torturing Sun Wu and explaining his modus operandi and plan. He can easily do anything with anyone with the help of a phone. He goes to meet Nami, and she tells him her problem. He claims that spyware was installed on her phone. He also tries to make Nami believe that her best friend is behind the spyware. Nami asks Unju why she did that. Unju feels very bad and angrily says that yes, she did all this. Now there is a misunderstanding between them. Ultimately, Jun Yang succeeds in isolating Nami from everyone important in her life. She angrily throws her phone, which breaks. She realizes that everything begins at the same repair center. Because before that, her life was going absolutely fine. Yun Ho and Ji Man have to capture Jun Yang at any cost. Because all these dead bodies are spreading the fear of his evilness everywhere. They also get the location of his shop. They go there, but Jun Yang, who is one step ahead, destroys all the evidence beforehand. Nami also comes there looking for him. G-Man tells her everything about Jun Yang, except that he is a dangerous killer. Now Nami knows about Jun Yang. She realizes that there is still spyware inside her phone. She finds out from G-Man's phone at the digital security agency whether Jun Yang works there or not. We know the answer to this, he does not work there. The whole story becomes clear in front of him, but still, there is one thing that is very critical and also very terrible. Which we will know shortly. She makes a plan so that they can catch him before someone else becomes a victim. For this reason, she will continue to pretend to be unaware of the phone hack. 
Then she will call him to her house on the pretext, from where G-Man can arrest him. Now she invites him to her house. Jun Yang comes home to meet her after a bit of a makeover. G-Man and Yung Ho are hiding there, waiting for him. Jun Yang happens to be outside the house alone. He even spots G-Man, who comes to arrest him. But G-Man doesn't recognize him, and neither does Yung Ho. He gets angry at them, telling them they are troubling the civilians, and leaves there very comfortably. But the thing to ponder is how a father could not recognize his own son, who had been away for only seven years. So the answer will be found in the end. They both go to Nami's house, and she turns on her old phone and puts her sim in it. They advised her to stay somewhere else tonight. That's why she thinks of going to her dad's house. G-Man and Yung Ho drop her off at Sung Woo's house. He also gives her his card, on which she writes that she will only text. And if she doesn't, then they should come immediately. Which would mean that something is wrong here. When she goes inside, she finds Jun Yang, who takes her hostage. On the way, Yung Ho receives a call that they found Jun Yang's body, whose DNA matches G-Man's. They do not understand what is going on. Jun Yang forces Nami to send a message to G-Man that she is safe and will talk tomorrow. Then he takes her to his father. He kept him captive and put him in the bathtub. Threatening to drown him, he ties Nami's hands and feet. He also puts her in the bathtub so that his father may die because of her. And then he will finish her too. He takes the last picture of his victim, like everyone else. Then she comes into the hallway with ease. Then he picks up that visitor's card. Actually, Nami had written on it. No texts, only calls. She had an idea that her other phone would also be hacked. And we know when. Jun Yang went to her house, and he hacked her other phone as well. As he watches outside, Yung Ho sneaks in, whom he proceeds to kill. But G-Man catches hold of him and starts beating him. Now she asks him a shocking question as to where Jun Yang is. He is asking his own son where Jun Yang is. He begins crying and says that he is Jun Yang. Meantime, Yung Ho takes Nami and Sun Wu out of the bathtub. Nami survives, but her father is not regaining consciousness. When G-Man opens the suitcase, the real truth is revealed to him. In fact, the total was not eight but nine victims. First of all, this killer had killed the real Jun Yang, the son of G-Man. The one who was not a bad person just left the house due to estrangement in his house. He had become the first victim of this killer. He had made all the notes about him. Taking his identity, she presented him in front of everyone as a murderer. So everyone will consider him the culprit. G-Man looks at his phone, which had a picture of his real son from the last moment. And we can understand what a father must be going through. Information about him and his wife is also written in the notes. He learns that he killed Jun Yang seven years ago. He says that he still talks to his wife as Jun Yang. G-Man breaks down in grief and anger and is about to shoot him. But he starts to manipulate him with his words. G-Man can't shoot him. Evil can manipulate a protector, but not a victim. Nami brings Yung Ho's gun and shoots him. The officer takes the gun from her. Only then does she see that her father has also regained consciousness. She starts crying happily after meeting her father. Nami is sent to the hospital as she has gone through a lot of trauma. The police confiscated all the goods there. Everyone comes to know about the killer's use of the internet to search for his victim. None of his identities has been found. Nami returns to her happening life with her father and Inju. But she will always fear that he might again become a victim of such a person.